Hey everyone, we're back again. Uh, so today we're actually going to go through um, EC020305 EP1. Uh, we're at a pretty cool location right now. So we're actually at our uh, cooling towers. Uh, we've got older cooling towers at this hospital, so they actually have deluge systems. Um, so we get we're able to cover all aspects of, of EP2, which is uh, water flow, vein type water flow, pressure type water flow, tamper switches, and water motor gongs, which is a less common one. So, but because we have deluge systems, we're able to go through that. Of course, I'm here with Drew. Uh, we're keeping our distance like we're supposed to, but we're gonna go ahead and go in here and uh, see if we can show you the right way to test um, test these devices. So, uh, we've got a couple of different uh, devices here. Uh, we've got an older water flow switch, and we're gonna go through how most, um, how I've seen at least, you know, most uh, inspection companies test these. So, um, the, the requirement from code is that water flow switches, uh, pressure type switches, tamper switches, are physically, um, they, they're physically function. So, we're going through, instead of tripping, tripping the switch, for a water flow, we have to flow water. That's the proper way to do it. And I got a great example here of one that failed. So this is an older water flow switch here. You can see we've got a, um, our paddle down here. This is a vein type. Uh, and it's actually not clicking right now. There's a plunger on the inside. Um, so most, most companies will come in and if they don't have a drain, they'll just push this plunger back. And you can actually hear it here it click. So if they were to do that, the alarm would activate um, if they held it for the right amount of time and it would send a signal. However, you can you can see that when the paddle actually moves, um, it's not allowing that plunger to, to click. So this, this device failed, we had to replace it. Uh, this is the actual setting, sensitivity setting for those water flow switches. Um, you can have an immediate uh, all the way to a, uh, to a, you can have it delayed as well. You have up to 90 seconds by code for this to, to physically go off. So we've also got a newer version here uh, that we wanted to show you. You can look at it. It's a bigger, bigger paddle because it's for a bigger pipe. Um, but you can see, you can see here and you can hear it click, right? And you can see the paddle moving. What's important is that your testing company is not doing this, right? We want to make sure that this paddle isn't broken. We want to flow water, make sure that it it trick it trips the the switch uh, and the water's actually actually flowing. Um, it's really the same concept for uh, our pressure switches. As you recall in the EP1 video, so there's a high pressure switch for us. It's a it's a water flow pressure switch, um, and we've got the monitor module up there uh, labeled for it as well. But EP1 is for supervisory signals, and it doesn't require quarterly testing of high pressure switches. This is an alarm device, not a supervisory device, but it's the same concept. We don't want, we don't want the technicians um, tripping this pressure switch. We want it to be natural. We want it to be how it would actually happen uh, in the real world. Um, and then the same, same applies for tamper switches. So this is a valve tamper switch. We've done a couple videos before on this. You can see the stem in here, right? So this is our sensitivity. Um, and within two, two revolutions, this, this system's actually shut off uh, because we've got, we no longer have, have this um, cooling tower. So, but this sensitivity here has to, this tamper switch has to activate within two full revolutions of the valve. Um, or one fifth of the stem. So two full revolutions of this tamper switch doesn't go off, it fails. So we fail it as a whole system. We fail the valve assembly and the tamper as a system, come back and diagnose it later, do our ILSMs and all of that. So the only other, the only other component that we have, uh, and this is a quarterly test instead. So the other, those three are all semi-annual. So it's the plus or minus 20 days from the last event. This right up here is our water motor gong for the deluge system. So those have to be tested on a quarterly basis. The reason why uh, they can get filled with gunk, you know, sprinkler water is, is nasty. Uh, it's not, not, not clean water. Wasps uh, get in there, um, dirt daubers, things like that can clog that up. So it's important that the, that the water motor gongs are tested on a quarterly basis. So 
Um, what I'll do down below in the comment section, I'll post all the code sections, the requirements, uh, so you can go and reference it. It's a combination of NFPA 25 and NFPA 72 that really push, push these requirements. So uh, look forward to hearing comments and questions. Um, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Drew. You're welcome.